Hello and welcome to the 2011 season opener of the Intercontinental Rally Challenge. It also happens to be the centenary of the Rally Monte Carlo, this world famous and world renowned event started way back in 1911 and 100 years on. It's the opener for the IRC. Day one made up of four stages, a total of 128.37 competitive kilometres. They were brutal. We're expecting more of the same on day two. 94.36 uh, competitive runs as well. Uh, right the way through Saint Jean Royan to uh, Carrefour Les Trois Roues, and then Cemetery Vesseur to Col de Goudizard. As you can see, an absolutely beautiful morning here, but we have cloud and plenty of it, and there is snow we are hearing in the region. For the time being, it is not on our course for the day at least not this morning but we are expecting that to change this afternoon look at that saint jean en royan to fond d'Urle. it's the first run through here it's 23.05 kilometers will be uh, going again in the afternoon it may be very very different well 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 what an event we've had so far welcome to monte carlo 120 crews uh, starting out on this epic challenge from the service park in valence uh, the drone air absolutely marvellous in terms of its uh, position within this great event. Destination, of course, Monaco, where we will be tomorrow. Well, as you can see, helicopters are up, no problem whatsoever. We're hoping that uh, if we do get some snow, it's light flurries uh, this afternoon. It may add a certain frisson into the mix. One man who won't be there, of course, Andreas Mikkelsen. His rally did not last very long at all. Sadly for him, he was uh, just too static, he said, at uh, the, the start. Uh, the cold winds caused temperature issues with the rubber, and he just lost control. Finished on the spokes, as you can see. Too much damage to continue, unfortunately. Definitely cold tires uh, was the problem. Uh, we, we warmed the tires very good up before the first stage and uh, standing there for three minutes and uh, of course it's cold outside so so the tires were completely cold again after that so um, big shame but I would never imagine the tires being so warm and so cold in only three minutes so basically the first proper right hand corner which was quite twisty um, the car just slid out so no chance. Well the first official rally of uh, the new Proton car uh, didn't last too long either. Nico Rios was uh, on course and having a good old run, but he got a front right issue as well. So the attrition rate was starting to be just a little bit high out there, unfortunately. Three minutes and 15 lost at the very start. It was light gravel on the surface that was the issue. Here is uh, that banana yellow proton. Unfortunately for Anderson, yes, uh, he as well uh, knocked the wheel off on the second stage of the day. Earlier on, Chris Atkinson had electrical issues, and I'm sorry to say that the Protons are on the way home uh, before they even really had a good run at it on a chassis that we understand is absolutely superb. If they can get some other issues sorted out, it could be a real contender. Stefan Sarazam yeah, made a massive impression on the opening stage of the day, so much so we weren't really sure whether the timing screens were correct or not. We had to wait for Johanan to come through to actually confirm that everything was well. Peter Solberg said his suspension settings were just a little bit too soft, and he ended the opening day in third place overall. Sarazan drifting a little bit, finishing the day in fourth place, uh, with the later runs after the first one not repeated. Freddie Loikes, he was a man who was just getting quicker and quicker, finished the day in second place, 44.5 seconds behind the man who just bossed the day, all save for the final stage, which uh, Freddie was quickest on. Unbelievable. Great to see Freddie Lloyds in battling mode. He'll be spending seven rounds with us during the IRC season, and <laughs> he could well win the title. Yeah, is that good? Uh, Hannon, of course, majestic uh, in all departments, even with the interviews. Phenomenal uh, run through. He just 0 0.06 off Sarazan's amazing time in the, in the opening stage and then won the next two, the second in, uh, behind Lux no in the last the car, to no, lead. No mistakes and uh, we had quite good tires for all of these stages and uh, cannot be disappointed. So, what about day two? Well, as you can see, there is plenty of cloud around. At the moment, it's quite high. That is how the overall leaderboard looks at the moment. Hannon leading Loikes by 44.5 seconds. Only Solberg and Sarazan are within a minute. Guy Wilkes, fifth quickest so far in the general standings. A minute and 18.7 down. What will be the response of the Persians who trail the two Skodas at the moment? 
Well, they're going for medium compounds this morning. Uh, we'll see how they go. Just about everyone else going for the softer compound tyres. Moat into 10th place. He will be starting us on the road today. We look forward to the action, which begins in just over two minutes' time here, live throughout the day on Eurosport. Saint-Jean-Orient to Fond d'Eau, the first run, and then the Cemetery de Vassieux to uh, Col de Godizard. Those are the two stages that we will see twice today, four in total, but it's going to be two big couple of hour blocks for you. Uh, the Rally of Monte Carlo. Uh, this is the maps that we have for you today, and this is the altitude and the climbing that they're going to have to do here. 300 metres up to 1,270. A lot of temperature changes, and particularly in some of the vales and amongst the trees, the road temperature is around about one, minus one to minus three, we are hearing. No black ice for the time being, but plenty of frost about. Uh, that is something that they're just going to have to deal with. It may well change throughout the day. We're having temperature range from between uh, around about seven Celsius from the bottom to the top. That might be even as high as a difference of 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, so as you can see, things can change. This is going to be the opening order today. Morat is finding himself in 10th uh, place in the rally overall, ahead of Vignon and Delacour. Bouffier will go next, and then it's Jan Kopetsky. It's reverse, reverse top 10 as it was yesterday. It was Guy Wilkes that opened the day yesterday, but uh, he's fifth quickest, so he'll be bang in the middle of the morning starters, which could be a little bit more comfortable. Who knows? Uh, yesterday said it was a great honour to open the rally. Well, today, he finds himself in fifth place. He is one of those who has gone for a medium tyre setup. In fact, all of Peugeot have done that, except for Peter Solberg, who has gone with soft. My name's Carlton Kirby. Alongside me is Andrew Coley. Andrew, uh, minus five air temperature here. 40% chance of uh, precipitation. That is probably going to change this afternoon. It is. It's looking much more likely that we might have snow this afternoon. People were thinking about it this morning. Usual tyre shenanigans going on when they left service. Stickers over the compounds. Last-minute tyres going on. But really, they've all gone for slicks, Carlton. It's just a difference of whether they've gone for, you know, super soft or sort of soft medium. So a, a few different things. Interestingly, a lot of the Peugeot's only took one spare. All the Skodas are taking two spares. Right, we've got an M Sport uh, Ford underway to get us uh, opened up here and uh, quickly away. We'll sit on board just uh, briefly. Andrew, Wes, um, tell us a bit more about Moran. What's his uh, deficit on the, uh, the uh, on Hannanen at the moment? Well, you, first of all, Moran, you might remember him from last year. He debuted the Fiesta S2000 with uh, Mikko Hervonen, but unfortunately he had an engine problem. It was a good job for Ford that it was this car that had the engine problem and not Hervonen, because of course he went on to win. But Julian Moran, someone we're not particularly familiar with in the UK, He's going to do eight events this year. His dad has 70 Ford dealerships in France. So That's I think handy. he's got a fair bit of funding, and that might be why he's in Ford. Yeah, and uh, it might well be why he's very, very used to it in this part of the world as well. Uh, quite familiar to some of uh, those further down the order, but uh, very big stalwarts within the French Championship, of which he is, don't forget. Uh, so he kind of knows these roads, knows the feel of them, and particularly knows this kind of surface, and that is so important. We saw it catching a few out yesterday. Temperature changes are what it's all about, and it, the, the amount of uh, temp that you're getting into the tyres early on, and particularly on a range like this, not quite as abrasive, uh, this surface, as it has been yesterday, uh, but he'll know that. It's harder to get the temperature into the tyres as well. You can see these corners are a lot more over. See the car moving around underneath him yesterday. Abrasive, twisty stage. You can lean on the tyres early, get the temperature in, get the car underneath you. Of course, we still saw some people were caught out badly. This is a very smooth and uh, considered uh, run to open us up today. Now, just watch uh, the windscreen. You'll see we're getting a little bit of spotting here. There is some moisture in the air. It is falling as snow, but we understand it is around about uh, three quarters of an hour away. Um, yeah, around about sort of 80 kilometres away, uh, but it is coming this way. So we expect that that weather systems may well change later on. Just seen a safety car uh, getting into position. Yeah, it's just a split screen there. I think of a zero car coming through the end of the stage, in fact, so the split screen not quite accurate there. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah. <slightly worried. laughs> Don't worry, they've just uh, finished. This is uh, Patrice Berbier. Uh, no, it's Vignon, I beg your pardon. Uh, so a slight change to what we were expecting today. Vignon underway with Iverno. 
So Jean-Sebastien Vignol used to be the Yako oil back driver. He used to use a Renault Clio Maxi in the French Championship, but found some uh, better backing. Uh, he was eighth overall on last year's Monty in a 207 S2000. So this is a handy guy on tarmac. He was doing some good times yesterday. I'm sure well, it will sheet. be the battle of the Yako boys because uh, sponsorship transfer to Julien Morin, who is our opening car here today. Well, we've got, we've got a few drivers. Morin, Luca Betti, the Italian, Jean-Sebastien Vignol, and Alex Caffey, the F1 driver. Ex-F1 driver did very well yesterday. Ended the day... Uh, quite high up the timesheets. He was doing 15th and 14th fastest times respectively on stage 3 and 4 yesterday. But Vignon, uh, 14th, 13th and 2 11th fastest times yesterday and that's why we're seeing him in the top 10 today. Uh, absolutely still, you might well say that's the calm before the storm here, the McDonald's machine. <laughs> I think we took some photographs of this in the service park. Uh, uh, it's quite a nice little livery when you when you look at it close up. Surely they must have driven that through a drive through for a bit of marketing, Carlton. It's, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Andrew Coley's favourite restaurant when abroad. No, it isn't. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> it is. Well, that's evened it up. Uh, there we are. We're just uh, around a minute into the stage at the moment. Uh, but as you can see as well, it's kind of leaden skies as we speak. Uh, full chat here, though. Look at this. This is nice, smooth lines we're seeing here. A lot wider road than we had yesterday. It was very sinuous. Only single track on occasion. A lot of danger around the place. Gives a bit more freedom in terms of uh, your approaches and your lines into and out of these corners. It does, but they do switch as they they go further onto the stage onto a narrow and uneven road and they've got some long straight searches continually climbing and then the road will widen out again towards the end. Francois Delacour ready to go on the start line. My favourite French legend, again, still a real buzz around him in the service area. Yeah, Delacour uh, uh, finding himself at the end of the day, almost two minutes down, however. Um, he was, uh, uh, how can we put it, tetchy, uh, but others would say up for it, uh, I think, yesterday. A uh, bit of argument going on within the car. Let's see how they go here. Shall we listen in? Why not? <laughs> Well, it's great to hear the on board and uh, <laughs> nice to hear some silence from Delacour, who's really settled himself down here. Um, nothing too testy right at the beginning here, but as you say, Andrew, this is going to get uh, a bit more Delacour friendly later on in this stage, isn't it? I saw him last night at the in control, a, a massive buzz around the in control last night. So many people in the service area, the place was packed. Uh, he, he was very relaxed, you know, a oh, little bit of a moment there for Delacour, still slightly cold. You could see he approached those first few corners smoothly again. Yesterday, we watched him just play himself into the stage. He's been doing that. He wasn't happy with the car yesterday. Too soft on the suspension, too soft on the tyres, and he couldn't change it because there was no service back here. Uh, this will be fascinating when we get to the first uh, checkpoint here. It's at 5.64 kilometres. Then we won't be seeing another one, incidentally, and not, another, no other the split until 23. I expect Delacour is going to eat quite a few seconds into this and it's going to be our first real proper benchmark uh, provided he doesn't uh, repeat the feat of that last little twitch uh, back on board with him. You can see just away again, uh, just to get, just going a little bit too uh, too much grass there, just uh, clipping too, uh, slightly too much. I, think, I don't think he's got his temperature just quite right yet. It's difficult, as we were yeah. saying. You know, we, the air temperature, we, we believe, is zero at the start, minus six in the middle, minus seven at the end of the stage. But I spoke to Phil Pugh, Guy Wilkes co-driver. He said there's no ice, just frost. And when you see the pictures at the finish of this stage, there's snow and frost at the side of the road, but we're at low altitude here, so we're not seeing it just yet. Yeah, massive sun visors, you can see on the screen, because we have got low sun. It was affecting them yesterday. Um, I think they thought it was going to be more the same today. I'm not sure you're going to need that much visorage today because it is going to be cloudy. Uh, maybe they'll strip some of those off for the late afternoon, but uh, Delacar knows what he likes, and it's looking through a letterbox right now with him. Big handful again. He's using all the road, and I think possibly a bit more than he's actually hoping to. He's a legend, though, isn't he? He's just my favourite Carlton, I'm afraid. I'd, I'd wanted him to come here and win, you know, I've not denied that. But I've, uh, I've mentioned it on Twitter a few times that Delacour I wanted to win. Of course, I would also like Guy Wilkes to win, but uh, we have to remain impartial, so it's fine whoever wins. But yeah. it's great to see a good battle at the front. Quite right, and uh, don't forget, we uh, are on Eurosport International as well as uh, British. Uh, Eurosport 2, for the time being, it'll be switching to International and uh, British 1 later on today. We are in the Asia-Pacific zone as well, so a very warm, uh, uh, pleasant evening 
something to you down there, uh, which is uh, good to see. Morin and Delacour, wow, that tells a story. Uh, we knew that Delacour wasn't, he should be beating Morin uh, at a point like this, but Morin, well, local knowledge perhaps, and Delacour still with that handful, as we said early on. He's just starting to lean on the carpet now, Delacour. You can see him pitch it in just on that last corner. You can see him just starting to use the car a little bit more. He's finding some temperature in the tyres. Uh, Morin, yesterday, and Vignon, I mean, we saw a minute ago, there was five seconds between them at the first split, but it really was a bit of a battle. Morin was faster in the morning, and Jean-Sebastien Vignon was faster in the afternoon. If you're wondering uh, why there's a little bit of a lack of heli shots here, we're going through a lot of woodland here, so uh, you, basically the cars are disappearing quite a lot, so we're giving a bit more on board, uh, at least for the opening uh, as part of this special here. Nice little slew round, beautiful control as he sets himself for the escape out of the corner, into the sunshine, hence the visor here. It's amazing, isn't it, what these boys are prepared to take on with these machines that uh, everyone else would just normally completely avoid. It's fantastic. Fantastic on-board pictures today. So next up, it's uh, Jan Kapetsky. Uh, Kapetsky, well, he didn't really... He's kind of a steady run, I think you'd possibly say that. But uh, faded to seventh at one point, back up to sixth after finishing fifth on stage four yesterday. Uh, but Kapetsky, he's playing the long game. He admits that. Helena, of course, is doing a selective IOC program, so could be more open to attack. Kapetsky, really the number one son, I suppose, for Skoda this year. Uh, we'll see how he gets his run through here. Still with, uh, with uh, on board with Bouffier now. So Bouffier, another one of these drivers to only take one spare, so very confident with their tyre choices. It's not about having a puncture, it's about whether or not you have a choice of tyres to put on the front. So some of these guys are taking, say, a pair of mediums in the rear and softs all round in case the car doesn't feel good. If you were with us yesterday, the soft tyres, everyone said they were too soft, but it is a bit colder today. Yeah, it is a bit colder. Uh, we're hearing that uh, ground temperatures below freezing. Uh, despite, the f despite that, because we haven't had rain, uh, there is no black ice, but there is a little bit of frost from the morning dew. That won't affect uh, the, the choices too much, but almost everyone in Peugeot have gone for a, a medium compound, except Peter Solberg, who's gone for the soft here. Moran's time still stands, but Bouffier equal to him. Once again, French championship contenders know this area very, very well indeed, and they're proving it right now. They are indeed. Now, Bouffier came into service last night and just was complaining the car wasn't quite underneath him. He didn't have enough traction, didn't feel it was right on stage four, and actually changed the rear differential last night. So he said any change, and he said, yeah, the rear differential. So he just meant a complete change, not a change to the setup. It wasn't working. He said it was like driving a two-wheel drive car on the last stage. Yeah, he only finished the last stage eighth. That was his worst result. Uh, Best was fourth. So we came out of the box very, very healthy. Only 20 seconds down on Hallinan's time, which was more or less equal to Guy Wilkes, don't forget, when he opened his account yesterday. I think Bouffier will be fresh and ready for it this morning because he found out what the problem was. Very much. On the start line, Guy Wilkes, Peugeot UK. Yep. Uh, Peugeot UK said he settled in this car almost immediately. Lots of different elements between the Peugeot and the Skoda, but he said he felt comfortable almost immediately, and um, that bodes very, very well for this season. Yeah, everybody was asking Guy, including myself, about you know what are the differences between the Peugeot and the Skoda, and of course he was being ultra professional and uh, wouldn't give away too much. Now he's a Peugeot UK driver. But he said what it is, it's a, it, a lot of small changes that actually amount to the car's feeling quite different. Very greasy under the trees yes, here is. where Bouffier is. You can see a bit of dirt, but it's the, the road just isn't dry. You can see him struggling to get the car turned in. Yes, this is where that moisture is we were telling you about, and a lot of uh, dirt and mud is being pulled onto the road because as the drivers start to cut here, uh, there is earth around. It kind of looks as if it would be uh, rocky and not much mud, but uh, there is here. It's uh, quite a verdant part of the world, and as a result of that, you do get mud on the surface, a little bit of uh, that being dragged into the course at the moment. Areas like that, you can't take the cuts that perhaps you might want to, but it's particularly on the... Uh, on on the twistier sections here where grip levels are going to be challenged and uh, you're going to have to give it respect. So Kopecki in the first of the Skodas equals the split time of Moran and Bouffier which is 5.64 kilometres in. Big cut for Kopecki there, probably the biggest so far. Um, I think he's got a lot to prove to himself here apart from anything else. Um, you know, everyone else he needs to just put out of his mind and get to a zone where he feels comfortable. He didn't quite reach that yesterday. Uh, probably left himself a couple of steps forward to take and maybe this is the start of that. 
I was speaking to one of the Skoda team management this morning. I said, come on, you know, just give us a heads up for what you're going to do tyres-wise. They say everybody was being sneaky and putting the tyres in last minute. He said, look, all I can tell you is we're going to take two spares in all the cars. And he said, we're still deciding. And this was about three minutes before Loix and Hannon were due to head out. So it really is last minute stuff, partly because of waiting for the weather and partly a bit of gamesmanship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of uh, misstickering uh, going on. So these days they mould it onto the tyres so that all that's finished. You used to get people sort of uh, tipexing different numbers on there. Yeah. It's all happened. Uh, yeah, but these days it's just a very swift late change. Uh, that's uh, what you get. And you're kind of looking over mechanic's shoulders uh, just to see what they're actually sticking on. Uh, sticking it to the rest of them at the moment. Kopetsky, this looks quick. I think it might well be our benchmark, but we get to the finish for Moran. And there it is. That's where we're going to be measuring everyone against. That's not a bad time, you know, 12-13. You can also see the difference there in the temperature too. The fact we still got snow and ice at this part. It was minus seven. Craig Parry, Tom Caves, co-driver normally. Craig's doing nice notes for Jar Jardine and he texted us. Six air temperature, you took soft tyres. Yes, yes, it's, uh, I think it's a good choice. Uh, a little bit difficult with some part with a little bit ice. So, yes, it's a good stage. Um, uh, be difficult without uh, snow. It's very, very fast stage, but uh, yes, it's good. Thanks. There we are. Uh, difficult if we get some snow. Everyone's talking about it. See those clouds that are shrouding the sun at the moment as Kopetsky continues his run on uh, the sort of slightly narrow section, which is going to be coming to in a few moments' time. Uh, some landfall areas, which you get when we hit springtime at the back of winter, is actually narrowed sections of the road here. You must be caught out by that. It's part of what your pace notes are. Look at that at 5.6. Just about everyone locked together. It was the road section, the sort of standard section, really, before you headed up onto the B and C roads later. Wrong. Well, it's Hannon, then, isn't it, who we're waiting for to come yeah. through and smash all the splits, which is what he did all day long <laughs> yesterday. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. On board with Wilkes and Pugh. on board. Uh, I, I love Pugh's uh, notes, to be honest, his calling. He, he just, he just, you can actually hear him straining against his uh, straps as he goes along here. <laughs> Almost breathless, but still punches out the notes here. Let's listen again. Great work. Lovely livery as well here. I love the way they split the Union Jack with a, with a sort of a mouth at the front here. Almost looks like he's just driven into a flag and it's stuck there. Here we go then. Vignon coming across the line. Second quickest, 10 seconds down. So Moran's time really was a belter. It's on that climb, isn't it? That's when you've got to have the guts. When, they, when it narrows, the surface gets a bit more skittery. Uh, that's where you really, really find out who's who. Here we go. So did you like the special? Well, it's not too bad, he says. Uh, a little bit too soft, I think, we went. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit uh, more uh, humid later on, he says. So a little bit more moisture, perhaps, this morning than I expected as well. Oh, there you are. Soft tires for oh, well, the first stage. It was not easy. I thought it would be a bit more down this morning. There we are. Well, that's interesting because that's two different opinions. So Moran came through and said, look, I took soft tires. It was right. Uh, Jean-Sebastien Vigeon's come through and said, no, I think he's wrong. So big cut for Sarazan. He's on an absolute charge here. Sarazan, don't forget, uh, yesterday was uh, really the daddy of the opening stage. And we thought, goodness me, is it all over already? Should we just uh, head down to, to, to Monte Carlo and give him the give trophy? Him the trophy? Uh, then it all just uh, started to ebb away from him. And he's on the catch up again here. Now, only a second down, don't forget, on Moran here. But look at the quality who is around him. Uh, Garwicks was two seconds down at that section as well. Uh, we'll see whether their tyres come in a bit later. Don't forget that they have gone for uh, the medium compound. Uh, Sarazan has it as well, uh, the Persia that is. Uh, Guy Wilkes now, he's... Uh, is he? Guy Wilkes, in fact, is also on uh, the medium. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> momentarily there. Yeah, four medium sets for them, except for Petter Solberg, who's gone for soft just like the Skodas. Yeah, the Skodas, some of the Skoda guys have taken six soft, so they've taken the two spares, but not with an option to change to mediums, with an option to put fresh rubber on. Okay, that, Delacour. Delacour. There we go. How's about that for a trip? Well, he we said this would be your, your benchmark. Sub-12 minutes is going to be very, very quick here, and he's got to that. 12.03 for Delacour, and uh, I'd love to to find out his feelings here. Seems to be a good start for you this morning. 
Yeah, not bad. The car is going well. Much better than yesterday because yesterday we were sliding a lot because the spec was not so good and it's a little bit better now. What tire did you have now? I have the other compound uh, uh, 020, so something like that. I don't know very well about the tire. He doesn't know very well about the tie. Doesn't know what he doesn't want to let uh, out of the bag, uh, but that's understandable. But it's a, it is a soft compound, but it's a medium soft. We're talking medium, but that's uh, as opposed to the, just the full soft here. Solberg, what about that? Well, he's gone for the soft compound. We understand this morning, and he's the only one of the Peugeots to do so. Solberg quicker than Wilkes at the first lap after only five kilometres. Don't forget, by four seconds. That's an enormous margin. That wow. could be magnified big time because the second part of this stage or the, the body of this stage is going to suit him. Solberg last night just on the last stage he pipped Sarazan for fourth place. Doesn't sound like we've got the on board with Chris Patterson today with Solberg. We're listening to the engine instead which is always good to hear it squeal. Now that was fantastic so you could see there pitched the car in very committed on the gas early and managed to slide the car all the way through the corner rather than suffering from understeer on the exit you got that absolutely bang on Solberg's on a bit of a mission sorry beautiful little twitch as he just came out there to balance the car on the exit sorry I was uh... don't be daft no problem on a mission look at this Bouffier then French champion let's have a look 5.8 that is impressive. So 5.8 seconds quicker, Bouffier now. Bouffier last night was lying in seventh, just ahead of Delacour, so Delacour won't Real be threatening him. Um, good time, best time so far. You took a soft tire? Ah, it's okay. Uh, the road was slippery, but uh, okay, the car is working well. We'll see what's happened with the uh, guy, with the guy be behind me, but uh, okay, we'll see. I hope to do a good time. Yeah. Was it soft compound, your tire? Oh, it was uh, not the harder one, but uh, a bit hard, yes. There we are once again, and it's the medium compound. And uh, well, Solberg, look at this, it's amazing actually. Just watch his uh, gear changes here. He uses all different parts of his hands, depending on uh, where it is. He used to paddle, of course. He sent his uh, hand round to around about the mid midday section, if you like, and actually used the back of his hand and, and all kinds of things, just to, remembering that the, the gear is not exactly where he uh, expects it, but nonetheless, very, very quick here. Yeah, I mean, you can fingertip change the WRC yeah. cars, literally your little finger and just push the gear paddle away from you. These cars require thumping through the gears so pressing on here this is a greasy section through here he likes it he had a, an overly soft setting on the car yesterday uh, that will have been tightened up today he said uh, that really didn't suit him but he's the only one who's gone for soft tires it wasn't uh, the uh, contact with the surface that was the problem it was um, yeah, the suspension settings that he has altered. Uh, this at, uh, well, five and a half minutes in. Uh, we've still got a long, long way to go with Solberg. Should we listen in? I know we've not got no pace notes, sadly, this time. But way beautiful stuff. He's really pushing hard cars. He's got the car underneath him this morning. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Solberg can produce some of the magic that got him a World Rally Championship and make a battle for himself and Hannon. Hannon is a long way in front, let's not forget. 44 seconds ahead of the second place man. What's lovely about Solberg as well, he's not an overly busy um, driver. You don't see an awful lot of input. It's absolutely just enough. First of the Skodas. Look at that. And quickest, point two. Will it be enough for Kopetsky? Well, oh. said we, need, we said he needed to find something. On the soft tyres, don't forget, Kopetsky. So... Uh, in just point two of a second out of Bouffier. Good morning. Uh, it seems you have the best time so far. You have a better feeling than yesterday? I don't know if we will say. Maybe I lost a little bit of time now in the top because I had uh, from the gravel crew some snow on the road and there was nothing. So I don't know. Maybe they expected uh, people will put the snow, but luckily they didn't. So, OK, we are here. We will see. Thank you. Just looking at uh, uh, Solberg, just uh, getting that a little bit squirrely by the looks of things. He didn't quite get the drive out of the corner he'd hoped for. A momentary lapse, a momentary mistake. He's very critical about himself. Yesterday he said, I made a little mistake going into one of the woodland sections. I think he thought we'd seen it, but what a beautiful vista that is. This part of the world, by the way, it really is magical. The people are incredibly friendly as well. It's not just because we're wearing rally badges. They absolutely love having visitors to this part of the world. It's largely overlooked as people go more to the Alps, if you like, or down south. If you're ever in this Drome or the Ardèche area, uh, you will have a lovely, lovely time. Uh, so here we are, uh, Solberg uh, coming to the end of his route. Just went through the Pionier Tunnel at the top of the stage, 1,100 metres altitude. He's got another few minutes to go yet. 
can see the snow and ice just starting to appear at the side of the road. Kopecky was saying that the ice note crew, I think he was saying that he was expecting more snow. So maybe their weather said that the snow was going to come in, but not enough for studs, obviously, because it wouldn't be frozen. So they've gone soft compound, but both seem to be doing the times. Yeah, Solberg I think everyone be believes that the snow's going to stay away until this afternoon. Yeah, Delacour's uh, been saying all weekend, yeah. doesn't it? Well, it's not a weekend, this rally, is it? But it feels like a weekend it when does, you're on a rally. He's yeah. been saying all the while, this afternoon stage, there will be snow. Yeah, so expect uh, maybe to, the studs to get their first feature. Uh, probably more likely tomorrow, it, it, uh, on the final day, I should say, if we get plenty of heavy snow in the meantime. Should we have a listen in? the finish guy wilkes coming across fourth quick is 7.9 down and uh, medium compound don't forget kipetsky took soft let's speak to guy they'll be looking at the board and uh, he won't be overly chuffed guy good morning you had a good tire choice uh maybe a little bit too hard um I had a big slide in the start, the damper was maybe a little bit too stiff in the rear and uh, it just spoiled the rhythm on the start. Afterwards, we, we got back with it, but like I said, just a, just a pity that we had a big slide at the start. So Guy basically saying the big slide at the start knocked his confidence there, he found it hard to find his rhythm. Yeah, everyone was complaining yesterday the cars were too soft, the tyres were too soft today. Stiffer, medium and it's cold and maybe not quite there, but it's, it's not a great loss, Carlton, it's not an enormous amount of time. Waiting for um, uh, Sarah Zant, of course. We've got uh, Solberg, uh, Freddie Loix, uh, hooking up with him right now, coming into this uh, uh, tunnel section. Um, no wonder some of the spectators have actually stood there. Uh, you just want to record it and then put it as a ringtone, wouldn't you, coming through that mountain tunnel? Fantastic. Right up to the top now. And through to the other side. Now, a few of the drivers were saying last night, St. Bonnie Lafoy, it was the first time ever that they'd done the stage in the dry. The record from the previous year was smashed because it had been completely snowy. And in fact, four people went off in the same place on that stage last night because it was so far sixth gear stuff. There was one crew, car 25, they went off and everyone was a little bit worried. In fact, it was a broken leg for the driver and both crew were okay. But four cars in the same place. It was a tricky run. And yeah. these stages now, they're dry. They're so fast, they're completely different in the characteristic. They are. Uh, yesterday, there was a suggestion that the stage had uh, been halted after car 29 went through uh, we've seen some times which they were going to give all the drivers their original first run times uh, as opposed to just giving everyone a neutralized time look at that beautiful frost on the trees up here uh, not on the road thank goodness uh, in the end um, the stage times did stand so I'll just let you know plus point eight third on the stage the quickest for Sarah's um, that's not bad at all quicker than Delacour again Bouffier's times looking very good here Good morning, Stefan. All the tyres are very close. Uh, satisfied with your tyre choice? Yeah, it's OK, but uh, it was quite uh, slippery, and uh, I slide in a few corners, so I keep a bit marsh, but it's difficult stage. Very fast. Same as Guy Wilkes, you know, just not finding the confidence at the start. We did see Delacour take a long yeah. time to get heat into his tyres. You know, maybe it's more slippery than they were anticipating. I think those who went for medium compound as well, which uh, Delacour did and so did Guy Wilkes, that's been their main issue. Those who've gone for soft sort of found the grip on the sort of normal road section uh, quicker. As we get to the mountain roads, which are, are, are quite a bit slicker, as you can see, and a bit dirtier here, um, those uh, with a bit more confidence, perhaps, uh, on the limiter. Tra translated from the earlier section of the course are having a good old run here. Petter Solberg, that was the first split. Can't read too much into that because there's a long way between that split time and the finish here, uh, but I expect Solberg to carry most of that. Loix is looking very, very much on an aggressive uh, run here. Now, we heard a lot of people on the limiter. Yes, there was a lot of talk online on Twitter last night, a lot of various different places where people were saying about the fact that the cars were on the limiter for so long and that the Skodas were actually doing a, 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 a faster terminal velocity than the 207s. I had a chat with Guy Wilkes about it when he came in. He said they did have one longer set of gear ratios, but you're limited on the amount of gear ratios yeah. you can mo homologate for these cars. And mm -hmm. He said yesterday would have been good for the long ratios, but today he's going to stick to the short ones. Exactly. That, uh, that gearing is going to be so vital here. It's, uh, it's how you read it. For, uh, play the long game essentially but is it just starting to slip away here we'll see Solberg this should be good well under 12 oh my goodness 11.51.1 there we are now what tires was uh, Solberg on Carlton um, uh, he's soft and he's the only one of the Peugeot to is. go soft so then Hananen on soft is going to be but a real threat the best time so far you took a harder setup and a soft tire no I had a soft um, a little bit stiffer, stiffer front spring and uh, 
And I went a little bit soft the tire, so I, it worked quite well. I, uh, we were pushing, but the, the throttle got stuck in the stage in the hairpin, so I lost a, I lost a couple of three seconds in in one hairpin. So yeah, but uh, it was quite uh, quite tricky conditions and very slippy. Yeah? Throttle got stuck in the hairpin. I think we actually saw that. Um, anyway, he uh, he clearly managed to uh, release it properly. Great time, that's our benchmark, but Hannon um, on a full chat at the moment, absolutely on the buffers, isn't he? Same section that we saw uh, Solberg through just a moment ago, so coming down to that braking zone. 100%. Wonderful to hear the car working underneath him. Better Solberg, third quickest coming in today. We're just waiting for Freddie Lodge to come across the line. Don't forget, uh, Freddie took the last stage yesterday, he kind of warmed to the task. Uh, but what will it be? The difference between Loix and Hannon is going to be crucial here, both on the Skodas and uh, both, we understand, running soft. 170 kilometres an hour, just shy of that, at the absolute limit. Lovely section here as we come through that juncture. Stop signs rudely ignored. I remember the first rally I went to watch Carlton, and uh, I think it was Malcolm Wilson was one of the first cars on the road in one of the old Michelin pilot escort Cosworths. So you have an idea in your head of how quick they're going to come past you, and then they just come past you and, and blow that idea away. If you've never been to a rally and, and watched at the stage side, you absolutely must go along. It will it'll blow your mind. Fourth quickest only for Likes here, 6.9 seconds down. Now, um, that is, uh, could be a, uh, we could be heading for a position change in the general rankings. Don't forget, only 11 seconds separating Likes and uh, Solberg overall. Uh, so it's eaten into that by around about seven seconds. Solberg's done well here. Um, you drive for the championship, so you have to look a bit for the points. Mm, it's too early. Yeah. It's too early because I have a, uh, a few good boys behind me. And uh, if they are still behind me, because I saw the intermediate time of uh, Petr and he was going very quick, so I couldn't do more. So it's too early. I have to push a little bit uh, more. Good with the soft tyre? Yeah, it was good. Uh, I think it's the right tyre choice because some places it has been quite damp and snow, so um, it's OK. You know what I love about Freddie Lux is uh, when he gives you an assessment of his stage, it doesn't matter how much drama there's been, it's like reading a bedtime story. And so we came to the end of the stage and found the pot of gold. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> Who's going to strike gold now? I've got a feeling that Hallenden here may well get bettered by, uh, by Solberg. We'll see. He's got a big gap, Hannon. I mean, he, he has a lead of over 44 seconds. It's very hard to control. We did say this a few times yesterday, but it is hard to control a rally from the front. You know, Solberg can keep tripping away six seconds at a time, then, yes, by the end of the event, he's going to be in trouble. But, it, you know, if he can match Solberg, we get close in there. Bit of snow in the road. I suspect the spectators have been at play. That's a favourite Monty trick there, to shovel a bit of snow in the road, or maybe just where the cars have been cutting. But Hannanen, this is key to whether or not he's going to be able to maintain control of the event. The last of our top ten runners, a uh, bit reversed here. There's Solberg's time. Uh, ten seconds to go. He's got to hit that gate. Yellow uh, boards you, there, very near the end. There we are. Question oh. answered. Question answered indeed, but only by 0 0.2 of a second. So let's see if he's feeling as comfortable this morning as he was yesterday. This man looked exceptionally comfortable with the car underneath him for the whole day yesterday. And we'll hear from him now. Very fast stage, you all, and uh, you have the best time so far. Better than Petter. All going well. Yeah, it was OK, OK, stage. And a very, very big thanks for the boys. Good marks on the to the pace notes, but quite tricky. Uh, a lot of places, it looks that it's, it's ice, but it's not ice, so, but the very tricky stays, very tricky. Notes are okay. What? The notes are okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, very, very tricky. Um, just uh, feeling the car moving underneath him. Uh, on board with wheels now. Yeah, Hannah also said good marks on the pace notes, and what he means there is the ice note crew. We didn't really talk about the ice note crew yesterday because there wasn't chance. any ice. Um, yeah, what these guys are, they're running through the stage before the drivers, and they're telling them where ice or snow has appeared or disappeared on the road. On a snow event, if, the, if this event had snow like last year, they are absolutely crucial. Yesterday, they had a bit of a holiday, but today, I think they're going to be uh, working a little bit harder. Yeah, you, uh, you have to see competitors on the side of the road. Uh, well, you think they're making snowmen, they're not. These are boulders which suddenly get uh, tipped on the road, and there's no notes that you can possibly make for that. Thankfully, it's remained uh, a little bit sensible so far today. If we get a bit more snow this afternoon, and 
and we are expecting it in this area. You can see a lot of it just lying around, and the trees with that hoarfrost, as uh, they call it. Uh, Betty's time coming up now. This won't be half bad for uh, considering where he is in the order. Uh, 33.2 he gives away to our quickest man. That's pretty much on a par with what we expect from uh, from Luca. Yesterday he was uh, 15th, 16th, 14th and 13th fastest respectively. Luca, this was a very first, very fast stage. How was it for you? Uh, I was very scared because uh, just uh, at the start of the stage uh, I touched the rear and I was uh, scared to have a puncture. I'm lucky, no puncture and I'm here, okay. So there you are. It's all about confidence, Andrew. We were saying that earlier on. A fifth quickest for wheels. That's uh, more like it. So wheels on the pace. Yeah. If, if you look around the times, when you see the times appear in a moment, we've got a very, very close run here. Look, from third to eighth place, you can see on the screen now, there's less than a second in it. We're talking eight tenths, I think, between seven cars there. So certainly the, the back end of the top eight is absolutely by no means settled. There, there's you, close you'd, gaps. You'd expect wheels to, to Hello, pick something uh, up. Hello, Must be a difficult Too far down the order. Here he is. Have it yesterday, but you have a fifth time, so all going well. Yeah, it was better on this one. I just uh, was uh, too much conf uh, not confident in some part well, from the gravel crew. We were sleepy things, and I was a bit conservative. But uh, it's better than yesterday. Yeah. yeah, better than yesterday. He had a very bad start, though. Forget <clears throat> uh, that front right puncture, which you saw at the top of the program, really hobbled him, and as a result, compromised him. You're going to see him taking leaps forward again and again. Hannon has taken this ahead of Pedersolbo by just 0.2 of a second. Kopetsky 6.4 down. Bouffier 6.6. Uh, Wheel 6.7. That's how tight it was. Half a second separating a number of drivers here. Likes only six quickest. Won't be overly stressed by that. He's playing the long game, as he's already said. Uh, but then again, he also said there are some very quick guys on the road here. Guy Wilkes needs to find just that extra little bit. He's running mediums at the moment. He's carrying two spares in the boot. Um, one suspects that they may well be soft. I don't know. We saw mixed ru mixed uh, rubber yesterday. Uh, maybe that will be the idea. Look at the gap now between Leutz and Solberg. Very, very narrow indeed. It's uh, less than four seconds between them. Hannan is uh, still the daddy, however, and once again takes another stage here. Guy Wilkes drops to sixth place. We're going to head down to the service park live here. I'm just missed who we're, I'm just missed who we were speaking to. It's Pavel Hortek, he's the Skoda Motorsport team manager, so we'll have a chat with him and I dare say he'll be very, very pleased with uh, Juho Hannan's performance over the last couple of days. The least likely of the Skoda drivers to do what he's done on a tarmac event. Here he is. I'm with Pavel Hortek from Skoda Motorsport. Pavel, it was close there, but Juho managed to do it again. He really is on the form, isn't he? Yes, he is. His shape is unbelievable. Another scratch for him, and uh, well, we are not in the middle of the of the rally yet, so still, it will be a big battle, I can imagine. But he has got the lead. You know, he's got a good time going. Yes, yes, it's uh, the buffer is really impressive, isn't it? We were just saying that he seems now, Yuho, to have found his balance between finding that speed and controlling it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you, we all remember him since he appeared for the first time two years ago in the IRC. Now he's really uh, very cool and very balanced, and we appreciate his his performance very much. And uh, thinking of the team, you've got a big co operation going on here. Five cars came in with five. Yes, as you surely know, Skoda, we are celebrating 110 years anniversary of the, our motorsport activities. So that's why, especially in really Monte Carlo, which is so important, we brought uh, so many so many cars, so many crews. Uh, however, there are two uh, permanent crews of Skoda Motorsport, and then the, all the others are here with the support of the Skoda importers uh, by Skoda UK, Skoda Belgium and Skoda France respectively. Thank you. It's so what um what are, you, what are you thinking for the next stage how's it gonna go well we do hope that everything will go on smooth for us as as it was till now but as i told you in the very beginning uh, there is a big battle in front of us yet i'm gonna let you get back into the warm because it's freezing out here thank you very much <laughs> thank you it is extremely cold uh, it may the weather change this afternoon that is the massive uh, of Vercar in Drôme. This is a monument to the French resistance during the war. Uh, it was an awful lot of uh, activity. 
Uh, fighting activity went on in this part of the world through the woodland area, and they are remembered by that monument, those who fell. So, uh, fascinating. We were just uh, watching Alex Caffey uh, on the split screen there, coming through uh, the course, uh, formerly a Formula One ace, of course, now with Skoda and enjoying himself. He was the one who yesterday said, um, it's just absolutely phenomenal. He says, being here, it's like having a, an entire championship in one single event. The 56 Grand Prix, uh, Carlton. Ex Scuderia Italia and Footwork Formula One driver. He's also done sports cars and touring cars. But he said he was exci as excited about contesting the Monte Carlo rally as he was about doing his first Grand Prix at Monza. Yeah, that's the standing Lovely, of yeah. this event. And Freddie Lloyd, in fact, as well, he said that to win this event would make him the happiest man in the world. That is the you know the level on which this event is respected by the drivers. I think it meant the same as well to Ogier and Hervenen, the last two years' winners. It's amazing, actually. Uh, Alex Gaffey, when you think about the spread of the experience that he's had, uh, 1986, he was in uh, at Monza. He's in 1500 horsepower turbo machine. <laughs> bit more power than he's got here well yeah but uh, he said equally as exciting and indeed uh, we, this part of the world we were talking about uh, the war uh, uh, history of this this area there was a lot of fighting going on and uh, yes uh, a lot of uh, people never made it out of this area and uh, it kind of just bites you and gives you a little bit of respect uh, in, in historical terms uh, for those who gave so much in this part of the world just to uh, keep us all free to enjoy this kind of thing which is uh, what we love Anyway, there we are, a little serious note on, on a day of happiness, I think, and the happiest of all, surely, out there have, uh, have got to be Mr. Hammond's crew. He's absolutely amazing. What is he going to What is he going to do wrong? Where, where is he going to get bitten here? At the moment, he looks so relaxed and so in control, it's, uh, it's almost beyond belief. Now, again, there were a few opinions about saying, you know, that he was pushing too hard. I, I mean, I don't think he is. I just think he feels that comfortable, Carlton. You, yeah. you can't call Hannon a gravel specialist anymore. You, you know, he's arrived on both surfaces. He's a massive threat anywhere he goes. So here we go then. This is our first run today through uh, Cemetery de Vazieux. That was the cemetery we've just seen to Col de Godizar. Uh, that's what we've got. Slightly lumpy, uh, but we're at higher altitude than we started the day. Uh, we'll be peaking just 100 metres higher from the start. You'll be seeing this run again, so it's double runs through. This is our second run of the day, but the first time through Cemetery de Vazieux and the Col de Godizar. That's your starting order. Morin, who had a very good start to this one in the M Sport car, that seemed very well settled, uh, particularly in the lower section, uh, felt comfortable early on. Guy Wicks will be going off in sixth place. He's holding that position overall at the moment. Freddie Loix says uh, starting to think the, uh, uh, the longer game in this one, but he knows that seven rounds of the season, this is his first. He wanted to count for something. Unfortunately for him, he's got a uh, certain Peder Solberg and Jor Hallinan in front of him. We have the Yako sponsored Ford about to get us underway. I was quite impressed with Moran's early on. So, Moran getting himself ready to head into stage six of Rally Monte Carlo. We've got a repeat of this loop again this afternoon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see just uh, what the differences are. The temperature, as you've heard, is a nightmare. Uh, you get in the wave there. Not that we're in the helicopter today. Garnish phone there. I'm on the telly, Mum. Look, look. <laughs> jumping around. <clears throat> Thanks to all of you who have been on uh, uh, Andrew's Twitter account, by the way. We'll have more uh, time to talk to you today, I imagine, because we have some good old two-hour blocks along the way. Uh, first in the morning with Eurosport 2, live and Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific, the lucky ones, they're kind of staying in one place. Uh, we'll be on Eurosport International and British later on this afternoon. Uh, that's 3 p.m. in the afternoon UK time, incidentally, after this stage has uh, been completed. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing them all again, so same runs as we've had this morning at 1600 Central European time for those of you watching on the continent. Um, yeah, Raj in uh, at Stratzone says uh, he is absolutely so in awe of uh, the rallying coverage here. Uh, Raj, we thank you for your, co uh, for your comments. Just a few more for you, Andrew. Yeah, we have. I've actually got an update on some of the British and Irish drivers for everyone.
Well, the stage is about to start in 10 seconds time uh, but Eamon Boland and Michael Morrissey finished day one in 25th overall after a great run Daniel Barry and Adrian DC power steering hose broke on stage two as Moran leaves the line uh, they finished in 51st Harry Hunt had a big off didn't he Carlton on he the did. first day he said he was very lucky yeah he said he was extremely lucky he was only a couple of meters from disaster and when you see some of the drop-offs here you understand what he means basically he, uh, he he went about 20 meters in but it could have been 120 meters and more he could have taken Taken flight. Uh, we're very glad he didn't. It took him nine minutes to find a road which led back to the stage. They dropped so far off the side of the stage. They were very lucky the Citroen DS3 R3 not, bar uh, not damaged too badly. He set some good times, finished in 57th, and Tony Jardine and Byron Young very much enjoying themselves. Yeah, when you come off uh, the road here, you can do a bit of off-road to find another road, and that's what he did. Uh, <clears throat> but if it had been a little bit further on, just a matter of a couple of metres, then he would have been... Uh, looking for wings. Moran then is on course here. Now, um, he uh, had a very, very good smooth start and then carried that advantage uphill. We've got a better time than I was expecting, certainly. Uh, but as we said earlier on, local knowledge pays dividends and the Yakko machine is uh, we're doing favours for his sponsor here today. He's doing very well indeed, isn't he? So this is the only car which isn't a Peugeot or a Skoda which has crept into the top ten. We had five Skodas and five Peugeots seeded in there, but Yesterday, really, I was surprised at the attrition rate. I really thought that without the snow, that drivers might take things more sensibly and play themselves in, but the cold conditions caught too many people out. There wasn't much grip, despite the fact the snow is there. There isn't the temperature in the tyres. Well, it was an M Sport party last year, don't forget. And, um, well, if we have the same attrition rate amongst the top ten, you might be seeing Moran starting to bid. <laughs> Uh, for top fives, who knows? Uh, we're seeing a lot of him this morning. Uh, just remind us, Andrew, what joy just a bit of an overcorrection there had to do so. Um, I'm just wondering whether it's bright sunshine here, but look in the shade, look how matte black the road is. Just remind everybody what the Twitter address is. Uh, Andrew, it's at wanna... Andrew underscore Cole if you want to get in touch and ask us some questions. We'll do our best to answer. Somebody asked yesterday about Maurizio Varini, 66 years old. He was European champion in 1975 and he's here this time. He's uh, steadily climbed the leaderboard at 51st a couple of times in the mid 40s and he's uh, after day one 38th overall. Lovely camera view here. They've stripped off the sun visor, so uh, we'll let you enjoy for a few moments, shall we? Well, uh, a wide open section, as you can see. I see a few uh, bergeries, uh, some of the uh, shepherd's houses uh, that save lives in the wintertime. You'll find them unlocked. And uh, if you happen to be up here uh, in the middle of the winter, and you'll find uh, food and sustenance there, as well as some straw to actually make yourself a bed. It's an emergency feature of uh, some of the harsher areas of Europe. And they're quite nice as well, I think. Uh, they do generally tend to get cleared out in the spring when uh, <laughs> the first hikers come along and think, you know what, a little bit of, uh, little bit of bread and some uh, soft drink, that, <laughs> that's just what I fancy in the spring. Uh, but it is there for safety reasons. Got a Twitter message from someone you may be familiar with, Martin Braid. I know he's watching on uh, the west coast of Ireland. Martin, of course, was uh, Daniel Barry's co-driver. Uh, this year, uh, Martin's looking at several different projects. He's going to be sitting with a guy in Northern Ireland who was second last year, I think, in the Northern Ireland Championship. He's going to be sitting with Peter Lloyd in an S14 World Rally car, which I know he's excited about. And he's even talking about doing some events in America. So, Martin, hello. Sorry you're not here with us this time. And uh, best of luck for the season. Thanks for your message. His message on Twitter was simply, Delacour is awesome, which I have to agree with. I've already forgotten it, so just tell us what the address is on Twitter again. Andrew underscore Coley. Or search for Andrew Coley on the one wearing a crash helmet. Perfect. Delacour about to get underway here, Vignon on an absolute charge, wonderful on board, the camera position <laughs> absolutely perfect, Delacour's Pfizer well, it's going to stop you seeing too far down the road, he sits so far down in the car, incidentally we were talking about uh, Guy Wilkes and how he manages to fold himself in, he does stand six foot four, um, so a bit like Justin Wilson uh, in uh, 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 American Open Wheel Racing in Champ Car, he used to stand on the third step of the podium and look like the winner uh, Guy Wilkes always looks like the winner He's, uh, when 
they have a driver lineup, he's always they always stick him in the middle, and he looks like the king uh, with all the Gulliver's travels almost. But he does sit low in the car. It had, took him a long time to actually just adjust there to put the seat back and the pedals forward just to get the balance of the vehicle to uh, to take guy. But he does get down to the weight, doesn't he? He's, he's six foot four. You know, he's enormous. Richard Burns was another really tall driver. I mean, when he first signed for Peugeot in the 206 World Rally car, had to make some alterations to be able to fit him in in the position that he was comfortable in. So it's difficult being tall, but he's, he's very trim as well, Guy, and, and Phil Pugh as well. Everybody likes a nice, short, lightweight co-driver, and uh, Phil certainly fits that bracket. So. <laughs> That's exactly what you've got here with uh, Delacour as well. It's like a little jockey. Um, he, he, there's an awful lot of space when you go and talk to him in the car because he's so diminutive. And he's got down to a fighting weight for this event. We said yesterday he looked like a teenager. He really did. He's just, uh, just amazing uh, how focused he is on this event. He wanted to be in the right place physically, mentally, with the right machinery. He's got the whole package here, and it's great to see. Delacour is into a, a few different sports. He's into jet ski, my favourite piece of Delacour trivia. He used to hold the record for jet skiing from France to Corsica. <laughs> How cool is that? I think that's all you need to know, really, <laughs> apart, apart to tell you about the focus of the man. Uh, yeah, amazing. Well, we're uh, we're just staying with him momentarily. Some beautiful helicam shots, by the way. Uh, credit to the operators. Uh, Bouffier about to get us underway here. If you ever do fancy a job as a helicam uh, man, you have to buy the camera. Then you go to Arizona. They teach you how to use it. I think it costs around about four hundred thousand pounds so you have to sell the house then you are responsible for hiring the helicopter crew so everyone asks who's the operator because he's the owner of course then you've got to have some work and there's an awful lot of blokes out there who would love to be doing this sort of thing can you imagine this for a day job floating around the skies with motorsport you do the dakar you do this you do uh well, the Tour de France, Tour that kind of, France, of thing, yeah. yeah, wonderful, but it does showcase the region beautifully, and um, yeah, amazing. Delacour, on board with him yet again, we uh, we digress. Two minutes and uh, 30 into this stage, and already looking an awful lot more set. It's a different start to this stage, isn't it? There's not so many greasy sections. Looks a bit drier. Interested to see the altitude. I'll have a look at the altitude for the stages and see whether or not we can see. It was more up and down, wasn't it? The last stage was a real mountain climb up through greasy sections under the trees. We're on board with Delacour. La Fon, La Fon. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Delacour on a march here. Uh, we get into a, a quicker, more open section and we'll drop back further down the order and have a look. But it's a, it's a pleasure to be with the great man here. Look how relaxed he is at these speeds through some of these uh, through some of these corners. It does get a little bit more technical later on, but this is a much more flowing stage than we had in the first one. It is Delacour, in fact, I believe he's our only Monte Carlo winner in the event. Maurizio Verini, who we mentioned earlier, the previous European champion, he had a second on the Monte. Petter Solberg's never won the Monte. I'm sure he would absolutely love to add that trophy to the list he's got from the WRC. Kopetsky on the start line and away in the first of those Skodas. Kovetsky uh, looked very good in the opening stage here. Uh, I thought he would have a uh, slightly better time than he did in the end. Uh, yeah, best placement actually for Peter Solberg. I think he was eight times, three times he crashed out once he re retired with mechanicals. Always with Subaru. Best finishing position, fifth. I think he may well be thinking about beating that here and uh, he's probably got the confidence to do just that. Delacour, a fifth place for him would be something of a victory, I think, uh, being at the age he is. What, 48 now he is? Um, you always say, well, getting to the end of his career, how many times have we said that about people? But Delacour just keeps bouncing back. I love the fact in uh, IRC as well that we get these guest drivers come in on individual events. Sometimes it's a local specialist, uh, Alberto Javier, who used to come in on the Spanish round of Styrias. Do you remember he was leading and, and ended up in tears because he tore a wheel off? You know, these people come to these events and they have a chance to shine on the IRC and come and take part against the top drivers. And it makes for a great atmosphere. Delacour and Solberg yeah. amongst the IRC regulars. Fantastic. And, and you get uh, crossover championships as well. Like the Italian championship comes over yes. uh, in Sardinia and uh, uh, in... Um, 
Yes, uh, it, it's marvellous to be able to see them just uh, wanting it, not only within their own, uh, but to shine on a broader stage, which is what the IRC gives you, and particularly this year, with it being the centenary, and how lovely the uh, the organisers, the ACM, actually want to be part of this setup. Uh, they just like the flexibility of it, they love the showcase, and they love the fact that Eurosport are running so much live. And when you see these kind of pictures, you can understand why it's such an attractive package. Very much. I think the other person that everyone is keen to compete against here is Solberg. You know, Solberg has a great reputation, and look at what Hannanen is doing for his reputation. With the comparison he gets against a WRC legend like Solberg, yeah, everyone will be looking at Hannanen in a different way than they were before. We knew he was fast in the IRC, but it's great when these guys come along. Last year, Ogier, Hervenen, yeah, OK, they did dominate, but they dominated by virtue of making no wrong tyre mistakes. They didn't actually dominate the tyre, uh, the uh, timing sheets for the whole event. That's, that's absolutely right. In fact, they bounced around it a bit, but they were solidly uh, they they had the thread uh, that went through this uh, this tapestry of the course here uh, French rally champion Brian Bouffier uh, we had a, a decent time last time by don't forget uh, and he is absolutely on on full chat here he's very familiar with this part of the world we mentioned that earlier on well the French championship kind of do their runs in the Drome and the Ardèche all over uh, this part of the world and weather knowledge and particularly surface temperatures and the uh, the way that uh, those surfaces chop and change whether you're in and out of the light uh, air and ambiance, all that kind of thing, it all counts, and they know. Now, we've got a great message coming on Twitter here. Greetings from Tasmania. We had a rally party last night, and sadly, we didn't see Atco, meaning Chris Atkinson, beers and a hot summer's night here. Well, I was too tired for beers last night, and it definitely wasn't hot, but hi to uh, Mitchell Newton from Tasmania, and thanks very much for your message. Yeah, Chris Atkinson, unfortunately, made it 700 metres through the first stage before an electrical failure on the proton, yeah, so just disappointing for him. Sparked out, quite literally, unfortunately. Uh, great chassis, incidentally. We may have Peggy Anderson sitting in with us a bit later. We asked him for his first impressions of the car when he first got hold of the Proton, he said, absolutely amazing. This car can be super quick. They've just got to find, uh, they've got to find a way of evening out the power band. First splits then, and Bouffier, quickest by two seconds at that mark. Kopetsky uh, trading him. Morin, four seconds down, but the best of the rest. Delacour, uh, worse than I thought for him. Vignon, we weren't expecting too much of, but Bouffier has nailed this. That's quite an early split on a fairly long stage, so it's going to be hard for us to see until we get to the finish. But it's just a big things are progressing. Oh, it is, yeah, it is, yeah, but it's three quarters of the stage to go. We feel his car moving around a little bit underneath him. Hopefully he's happier since that differential change last night. Rear diff not working properly. It's, a, it's good that he found it, to be honest, because it was just uh, malfunctioning ever so slightly. And one of those things, you're not quite sure where the problem lies. Well, he made the diff change, and it's coming to him here. This is the French Rally champion, don't forget, Brian Bouffier. 32 years of age now. Uh, Meek said he was going to be a top fiver at least in this rally. I think he might well... <laughs> that might, prediction may well come true here. As a big cuts onto some uh, snow that's been dragged out a little bit, helped us perhaps by a spectator, we don't know. We kind of overblame them, I think. Uh, there is some uh, the snow plough work that goes around here, and so you do get a little bit of snow banking occasionally, and if you do clip those, then it can be an issue. You're doing the right thing, getting right up close to your TV, uh, <laughs> stripping off all your clothes so you know just how cold it is out here, and just feeling it. Unbelievable view here on board. Um, they do, we, we do actually set the cameras on board the top 10 the night before, um, so you do have a, a, a slight weight advantage, I suppose, further down the order, but of course you lose that as soon as you get into the top 10. A uh, little bit of bodywork damage here on the Yako machine. Uh, just looking, he's picked up something. It's going to be our benchmark time, though, for Moran. 13.34.6, uh, remember that. So something dragging on the underneath of the car. Yeah. Quite hard to see exactly what it is. Doesn't well, look like a puncture. He might just have picked something up from the stage side. Let's see as he comes around the corner and see what it is. Maybe under floor protection, wheel arch liner, hard to see. We'll, we'll hear from uh, Julianne and hopefully he'll tell us what it luckily, is. Luckily enough for him, it's uh, not that serious by the looks of things. Sam, he's got a bit of a break now. Ah, uh, puncture ah, from right. Are. Stunning looking car, isn't it? The Fiesta S2000. The new World Rally car looks great as well. 
Julian, you had a puncture. Uh, where and uh, how it happened? Yes, uh, I don't know where, but uh, I have a puncture. Yes, yeah, since two kilometers only, I have a good, uh, I have a little bit uh, luck, but uh, yes, it's a deception. I have make a good stage, and with uh, with the end is uh, difficult. So, so it's good. It's good. Thank you. Very good indeed. If that was only two kilometers in, um, that time is going to be absolutely nothing, I'm afraid. Uh, Thirteen point uh, thirty minutes thirty four. Um, so we know that uh, those who are still on course are gonna, uh, will be well and truly into that unless they have their own issues here. This is wonderful, swooping lines of Kopetsky. Should we listen in again? Let's give ourselves a treat. Just uh, picking up uh, Guy Wilkes there for a, for a moment, uh, but uh, Vignon's finishing, so we're going to drop by on him. 13.5 uh, uh, seconds down. A uh, quick one off uh, off uh, your Twitter. We've had greetings from Barbados, oh. Carlton. All these people are contacts from hot places. We, we need contact from cold places. We're getting jealous. So Vignon. Uh, Moran's time, only 13.5 down with a puncture after two kilometers. Jean-Sébastien, tell us how was the grip in this uh, special stage? Quelles étaient les conditions d'adhérence uh, sur uh, cette spéciale, Jean-Sébastien? Elles étaient, euh, net... Elles étaient nettement mieux que ce que je pensais. Euh, J'avais des pneus très très soft et euh, ils ont un petit peu surchauffé. Donc euh, le, le choix de pneus n'était pas bon. J'ai essayé de rouler un peu plus, je ne sais pas ce que donne le temps, mais c'était pas... I'll trust the tires were good, but uh, Alessandro will do a translation yes, for you uh, now. Yes, grip condition surprised me a bit because I had two uh, soft compounds from this kind of grip, so I am a bit disappointed for that. Well, compound issue. Uh, on board with Kopetsky doing some uh, some huge cuts here. Um, just, Andrew, you were just going to say, sorry. Yes, yeah, certainly. We've got the top ten times after special stage five. No movement in the top ten at all, except for Guy Wilkes being deposed from fifth place by Jan Kopecki, so he's only two, uh, two tenths of a second ahead of Wilkes, so you know, Wilkes can fight back, and that particular part of the leaderboard, there's a few people in there who could have a bit of a fight. So here's Euro splits, and as you can see, it's pretty tight. Uh, Vignon, only five seconds down. I was uh, impressed by Julian Moran, to be honest. But right, after two uh, kilometers only, uh, pretty good. We've got Delacour uh, charging in here. Uh, 13 minutes and five uh, trims. 15 seconds off, and uh, so it's going to be sub-13 for the big boys, one would think. Delacour sat pretty much at 7th, 8th place for the whole event. Yeah. It's a great benchmark in that we know that everyone else who's coming after him, you know, is going to be around. There's no disrespect to Vigion and, and Morin, two great drivers, but the, the guys who are ahead of Delacour are the ones who are going to be fighting for the win, we think. Yeah. Francois, a new setting uh, today, so globally satisfied after these two first special stages of the day? Yeah, it's going up. Uh, every stage is a little bit better, you know. I learned the car as well, and uh, it's not easy car. It's the first time with this car, with this type of car. And uh, it's not easy, but the car is going much better, much better. And I think we can improve more, maybe with a spring to change the spring, because we are still soft spring from yesterday, but it's going well. Merci beaucoup. It's interesting, actually. Um, he says it's not an easy car to learn. Not an easy car to learn. And so, uh, yeah, we'll see. He's, he's having trouble settling in, obviously. Drop in. 
fantastic place as ever. You can hear the description of the road. They were saying about a signpost being late, turning in late, a slow left two, so slower than it would normally be. So Bouffier, much detail. Bouffier, quickest. Look at that, 15.4. Now, we were talking about local knowledge a little bit earlier on. He is carrying this through this event. Well, he also knows the car cars. You know, this year, Bouffier is one of the PSA group's main test drivers. done a lot of work on the DS3 R3 and, and an awful lot of work on the 207S2000. Back by Peugeot France. Yeah, good talker as well. Let's have a word. Brian, so 15 seconds faster than uh, Delacour on this special stage. Things are going better than yesterday. Today. Oh, you know, uh, for me it was it was okay. We'll see uh, with the guy in, uh, behind me because this morning they did a very good time. But okay, the car is uh, working well. Uh, all is quite uh, good uh, up to now. I hope to uh, to uh, to say to, uh, to to have a better position uh, following the, the stages. Uh, we will see. But uh, good day. Good luck. There we are, uh, pretty circumspect. I think he's just generally very pleased with the way things are going, and why wouldn't you be? Uh, there, bossing it at the first split. Wilkes Depp level with him, Solberg as well. It's very tight there. Sarazar a second down, on board with Solberg now. Little nip on the handbrake there into what was quite a long open hairpin, but just balancing the car beautifully. Solberg is pushing here. Look at this snow in the road again from one of the cuts earlier. He's being brave. He was very brave last night. That wooded section in sixth gear last night had deep intakes of breath. Went to the press room where the footage is on. Everyone was talking about how committed Hannon and Leutz and Solberg were through that section. The stage it was immense. Yeah, Solberg's uh, even saying that uh, he, was so, he was so committed he got himself into a little bit of a tangle. We didn't see that. It was underneath the trees when we were on one of the helicopter shots. It didn't seem to affect him too much, however. Uh, solidly in third place and uh, challenging uh, Freddie Likes. We'll see whether he picks up any time here on this one. Ultra committed. We'll join him on board. Jan Kipetsky uh, coming in for his time now. Uh, sub 30 minutes is good. Over that. Hmm. There we are. There he is. 9.4 down. Well, not bad, but uh, equally, it's not stellar at the moment, and he's kind of holding that position, isn't he? he his best result was uh, fourth, don't forget, on the second stage, when he really knew he had to take a step forward after that fright that he got in the, the opener here on the Monte Carlo. Uh, well, this is the second stage of the day, and uh, Kopetsky's still not setting the world on fire just for now. I don't know what's missing. On this stage, you lost 10 seconds on uh, Bouffier. Uh, how do you explain that? Yeah, I have two soft tires. That's quite easy. So wrong information from the ice crew note. Uh, no, 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 because they said maybe it's going to snow a little bit over here, so uh, we put safe option and, OK, again, the weather forecast was wrong, so we will see. Thank you. Well, there we are. Uh, soft tires, we understand, but um, well, we'll see whether the uh, weather information that they're getting. Incidentally, you ask the weathermen, and they don't tell you terribly much because they're all usually attached to crews round here. Uh, we had Monsieur Meteo, as uh, he's known in this part of the world, uh, having a word with us and said, yes, snow this afternoon, we're expecting, and possibly a flurry on this one. Well, we haven't had that, but it's definitely getting darker. And uh, the amount of onboard shots that you're seeing suggests that um, the helicopters are being a bit circumspect about going for it here. Uh, Boix is definitely going for it, but uh, the first split wasn't there. Can he pick it up in the latter part of this? Well, just a little bit of breakup on the on the uh, relay here uh, can actually be down to weather conditions as well. And as you can see, the clouds really are starting to uh, pile in here. It's very, very cold. So far, we haven't had any moisture which would freeze, uh, thankfully. And uh, the roads are relatively clear. Here comes Guy Wilkes. Uh, this could be a decent time. It's certainly going to be under the 13 minutes, but by how much of a margin? Here he comes. by a margin of half a second. Uh, third quickest. Very close to Kopetsky's time. So he's looking like Bouffier's time was a good one. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? When you just feel comfortable with the stage, and you almost feel at home. Uh, you can just let yourself go, and uh, that's what Bouffier did in this. That is, is looking a very good time. Here's Wilkes. Some drivers complained because they had two soft tyres for this special stage. How, how was it for you? Our tyres were fine. We, we had a uh, good rhythm. 
was we medium compound you yeah 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 we had medium slick and uh, we, we had a good rhythm maybe at, at, at the start because I, the back was a little bit nervous on the previous stage I was a little bit too careful to, to check it for the first two three kilometers and but no it was the end was good thank you so again, guy saying there that he'd lost his confidence on the previous stage, was worried the same would happen, so has knocked his confidence there. He is in danger of being swallowed up by Bouffier. Bouffier is fast approaching from the rear hind, and I don't think that the gap is going to be very close at all. Here we go with Solberg. Uh, it's his last run in here. Now, um, I, I, I'm not sure, uh, to be honest. Solberg said he had a bit of an issue last time by. It was with a sticking throttle. We'll see whether he's still got that problem right now. Sarazan just coming to the end of his run here. Uh, Sarazan, yeah, don't forget, he had that amazing opener. Not quite so since then. Uh, that was yesterday, of course. Uh, he's been um, struggling to find the same kind of performance. Well, this looks reasonably quick. Uh, yeah, I just want to know whether Solberg's issues are still prevalent here as we will be heading towards our break into this afternoon. We'll be staying around to see a couple of more drivers through, but here comes Sarazan in a very dark section, as you can see, absolutely leaden skies. Uh, the retina of the, uh, uh, the camera just opening up for us. This is going to be a decent time by Sarazan. Second quickest, 6.5. Bouffier still holds the lead, so whatever the result, Bouffier, I think he's going to be at least second quickest on this stage, and that's very, very good step forward for him. The best result so far in this year's rally. We knew he was quick early on, but Bouffier is warming to the task here, as predicted by a certain Mr. Chris Meek. So here we go. Uh, let's dive in and have a word with Sarazan. Stefan, even without uh, snow, the choice of tires is quite complicated. How was it for you? Yeah, it was okay, but it was snowing a bit on the downhill and I went a bit too slow, but uh, it's okay, I'm here and I will continue to push. Everything okay with the car? Are you going to change something in SF service park? Everything fine. Thank you. Everything fine. Well, I suppose that's like psychological snow, which is like psychological rain. The bike racers talk about it. You see rain yeah. on your visor, you back off. He's seen some snow. He's backed off just a little bit too much. But Boothier's time looking good. I'm still waiting for a refresh on the timing screens, but I think he's going to have pipped Guy Wilkes. Here we go. Uh, Bouffier has indeed pipped Wilkes uh, on this one. Uh, Solberg uh, dead level with him at the, at the first split. But uh, where is Hannon in this? Uh, dead level as well. So that's only at 6.32 kilometres, don't forget. Hannon still has, what, uh, uh, four minutes less than that now on this run. Let's get on board with him, shall we? Little transition onto the mountain roads here. The fans are just peppered throughout the stage here. In town at night, incidentally, uh, you just cannot move. The service park is absolutely heaving. Uh, the stars have come, and uh, they love it. Look at this, Petter Solberg coming through the gate now. This is going to be good. Second quickest, 1.2 off Bouffier's time. Bouffier, second quickest, I think he's going to end up on here, uh, depending, well, at worst. Uh, we've got Hannon on a charge here. I wonder if Hannon is just going to ride that comfort zone just a little bit here, and Bouffier is going to win this stage. We'll find out, eh? Fantastic reaction for Solberg in the uh, service park last night. They were doing some interviews outside the commentary positions over the PA system, and everyone went nuts when Solberg was there. Fans' favourite. Second best time, one second behind uh, Bouffier. Uh, how was this special stage for you? Ah, it worked. Uh, it worked actually uh, quite well. You know, we had a softer tyre, so I. I'm very surprised uh, with my time because it was moving, um, moving, moving quite a lot. So, uh, so if you see the total package of both ages, I'm, uh, I'm very, very pleased here. Yeah. What do you hope for, for the afternoon? Some snow, maybe? Well, it's snowing on the top here now, and uh, but a lot of the guys is pulling out a lot of snow and gravel. So when we are coming, it's, it's quite, uh, quite a lot of snow already. But. Uh, Ah, it's good fun. I start to get into the rhythm now, and it, it's really good, yeah? <laughs> thank you, thank you. There you go. It's, it's great that he remains so delighted here. Uh, we had, actually have started to see a few uh, snowball effects, let's put it that way, especially for Hannon. And just a few moments ago, while Pedder was speaking, uh, you saw there was a big fan of snow on the road. Uh, that's been placed there, unfortunately. Uh, you heard as well from Pedder that there is snow in the locale. We knew that. Here comes Freddie Loikes now. Um, this looks very quick. Quick, very quick indeed at this point. 
just around about half a minute remaining of his run in here. Let's watch this final approach here, Andrew. I'm 99% sure, Carlton, that this is the stage that they used for the prologue last year, because I'm pretty sure that's where we were stood on the left. And if you watch as they come down towards the finish, there's a left-hander, and then they go downhill towards the right-hand hairpin, which is just after the timing gate. This is the left. This last year, there was two foot of snow up here. There was. And this is uh, described and that's where we were standing. Where we last year right. for the prologue stage. This was a very fast downhill section. A, almost unrecognisable in here. Just after the finish, is a hairpin right. Well, it's not good for Loix here. This is not good for Loix. 15.6 seconds, and I think he has just handed second place to Peter Solberg in the general standings here. And he may well tumble a bit more than that as well. Freddie Lloyds did not have a good time. 15.6 down, slower than Delacour on that one. Uh, this is going to be fascinating. Okay. Uh, I think Lloyds has uh, dropped a good margin here. Let's find out why, shall we? Alessandro is always brutal in these moments. And here he comes. Freddie, you lost 15 seconds on uh, Bouffier, who said the fastest time. What happened? Uh, I had a small off, uh, not on a dangerous place, but uh, I lost at least uh, five, six seconds. But uh, definitely, uh, at the moment, it's impossible for me to do the speed, uh, what Petr is doing. So uh, I have to uh, control a little bit. Thank you. There we are. Uh, had a brief off, knocked his confidence, couldn't drive. He says he's just not keeping up with Solberg at the moment. This is Hallinan on his final push in. We're starting to see what looks like snow in the road cult. It's hard to tell from an onboard cam whether or not it's not. It might be the light, but we're seeing very dark skies. It's much darker than it was at the start of the stage. Sarazan has seen snow this afternoon. Could be different. Hannon and pitches it in on the gas and away <laughs> down towards the finish line now. Well, don't forget, he's got a, uh, a good cushion coming into this day. 44 seconds, don't forget. Slightly less than that after the first stage. But Hannon here is on a charge, and this is going to be a very, very good time as well. Uh, if the conditions are changing, He's riding them very, very well indeed. Uh, final sequence of curves here, uh, looking familiar to us, as you were quite rightly saying, Andrew, but um, uh, hard to recognise, but so different from last year. Hannon is time then. If he can just get around about the 13, he'll still be uh, quite comfortably the rally leader. And look at that third quickest. Gives away 5.2 to Bouffier, who's completely bossed this stage. But uh, significantly, Freddie Lloyd's giving away, uh, what, 10 seconds to Hannon there, 15 seconds overall. Yeah, uh, that's good news for Solberg, who beats Hannon in this one, takes a little baby step towards uh, the top of the leaderboard here. But Hannon still sits there after this one. Let's get downstairs and talk to him. Third best time, but you increased on uh, Freddie, so things are going still uh, quite well for you. Uh, it was Nice days and, uh, and, and I was a little bit too careful on the last part. The grip was very good, but uh, but but a nice nice days and uh, well, I lost a little bit for better, but uh, okay, no any extra pushing, no any big moments. So ah, it's not so easy now when the gap is this big. So uh, it's a little bit difficult to keep the rhythm. Do you prefer conditions staying like this, or do you hope for snow for this afternoon? Oh, well, some snow would be welcome. It would be more interesting for everyone then. Thank there you. we are. Snow would be more interesting for everyone, and I think he's going to get his wish come true. We're starting to see flurries in the locale, and we're talking only a couple of hundred metres away from uh, uh, from the end of the stage here. Um, you may well see it on some of the screens of some of those coming further down the order. It's going to be easier for Hannon to focus if there's something to do. With this big gap, it's hard for him to focus to know whether to push or not. If the conditions are tricky, everyone's going to focus again. It will be great for us if there's some snow later on, but the big loser on this stage, Carlton, definitely Lloyd was second overall after the previous stage uh, and I think we're going to see some movement on that leaderboard. Yeah, uh, Betty on board with him now, I think it is uh, Luca Betty and uh, is Peugeot it's great, actually, to see some of those further down the order, uh, getting some decent machinery and just enjoying the game, to be honest. And Peugeot have come here with a massive commitment, haven't they? Very much. I mean, you know, Peugeot want to win their home event. This is a French event and they want to win it. Yes, it's Rally Monte Carlo, but it's, it's you know, they're desperate to win it. With Vrios at 7.8 uh, for Skoda here, and uh, fifth quickest, that's not bad for Vrios. It's not bad at all. He's found his rhythm today. You know, he's been away for a year. You can't just jump into yeah. a car at the top of the IRC. Well, then again as well, he compete. also had that front right right at the beginning, and that really knocked his confidence. Well, it does, because it just takes away your motivation. Yeah. You know, you lose three minutes straight away. Well, yeah. why am I fighting? Uh, and so he's still here. We've had a lot of people drop out. Oh, very much smoking breaks here. Maybe he's taken the wrong compound of pads. 
brake co pad compounds, a light tyre compounds. He's maybe overheated it there. We'll get a word with uh, Nicola and find uh, out. Some smoke from the brakes. Um, any problems? No, 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 no problem. I tried to push. Maybe too left, too much left foot. I don't know, but the car is perfect. Thank you. Yeah, just balancing the vehicle, using the brakes, and uh, doing that a bit too much. Yeah, I mean, left foot braking is something which everybody with sequential boxes now, they'll left foot brake all the while. Uh, but on tarmac, you can't left foot brake as much as you can on, on gravel. Here we go, then. Uh, this is an area for base jumpers as well, as you can see. We do see a few wingsuits in this part of the world. Uh, but who was flying today? Uh, we're going to find out. This is your Simulcam section, uh, where we take a look at two vehicles over a one-kilometre run. Uh, not too much after the hairpin here, uh, but at least you'll see just how committed they are, Andrew. It's Solberg against Hellenen. Yeah, we might be able to see something to do with those gear ratios as well. Everybody's saying yesterday that the Skodas were geared that little bit longer. You can see there, just a different approach to the corner, a slightly slower entry speed and a slightly faster exit speed from Solberg compared to Hannon. And, and Solberg definitely on this stage has, has done a good job. So, gained quite a lot of time there, four tenths of a second over a short period of time. I do like this Simulcam. I'm warming to it. Bit of a bumpy start with it, but we've got there and it looks absolutely lovely. It's a, it's a new piece of kit. Now, look at that road here. Now, uh, <laughs> Uh, I wish I could give you a grid reference so you could actually just look it up, but it's absolutely beautiful. It goes in and out of the mountain. They created it in the 1920s, and um, they had to be brave uh, to dig that out, to be honest, and they just gave little air vent areas as well. Uh, here is Solberg against Bouffier in the same zone, virtually the same vehicle. Virtually the same vehicle. Very hard from here, Carlton, to see the numbers when they're overlaid <laughs> between the two and actually make a comparison, but we can see there. Uh, what have we got? No, we can't. We, it's impossible <laughs> to see the numbers, so great though it is. Luckily, of course, both cars have done almost exactly the same performance, and if you look there at the line, you can see, you know, professional drivers all along the same lines. It's lucky they were the same, because I couldn't tell them apart. No, exactly. Well, uh, we, we, we kind of... Um, <laughs> I think we'll try and get different vehicles. Binoculars is what we need. Boof, yeah. It's two cars, exactly the same. Look at the difference between them, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's the number on the side. <laughs> Solberg. 1.2 seconds down on our stage winner. Brian Bouffier doing a, a, a terrific job out there. Uh, Alan and just putting one in the bank with uh, Freddie Loix uh, getting into the bank. Had a minor off, uh, he said. Didn't blame anybody, uh, least of all spectators. But this is what it looks like. Solbeck is second now. Freddie Loix now a minute and two seconds down on Hannon. And goodness gracious, it's busy. So looking at that, we did say Loix would be the biggest loser. It's still the seven usual suspects, the magnificent seven who are in the uh, top seven overall. Guy Wilkes as well, uh, no, just holding on from Brian Bouffier, only two tenths of a second in it. So Wilkes is going to need to make some changes and make sure that the second loop of what we've seen this morning live again on Eurosport this afternoon, uh, that he can fight Bouffier off. Goodness gracious, what a battle. It's always the case when it comes to the Monte Carlo. It is, of course, the centenary, and look at the snow starting to fall as uh, the brighter areas where the cloud has burst start to feature. Big clouds around, there's going to be more of that. The legends, there's been plenty of them, and the Group A boys, they were magnificent. Sebastian Loeb, of course, is uh, one of the heroes. But as you look further back, Zandra Minari, and uh, possibly one of my favourite cars that ever there was out there. Very much a fan's favourite. Lancia Stratos, Walter Rule, legend from the Group B era, of course, known for his time with Opel and also with Audi. In the Quattro, if ever there was a better noise than this, I don't know what it is, the five-cinder engine, fantastic. And Tommy Mackin, of course, the great man that we've mentioned so often. And, uh, yeah, that car just kept N alive for such a long time, didn't it? It did, indeed. Carlos Sainz, three times winner, 91, 95 and 98. Of course, Dakar winner last year, I think it was, Carlton, and on the podium again this year. And the great Didier Oriol, he had some great scraps, didn't he, with Sainz. It was really between those two for such a long time. He only liked it when his car was set just the right way. Didier was not a driver who could drive around a problem. So there are plenty of drivers who could, but not Didier. We've all got our favourites. Didier Oriol is my personal favourite, to be honest. Loved interviewing him. I remember once when he was driving, I think, for Seat in the early days of their rally participation, he said, I said, how did it go? He said, to be honest, I do not know why that car is still in one piece. <laughs> That's how hard he was pushing. 
Mark Van Dalen, Guy Wilkes admitting there he's slightly unconfident in the car. Yeah, but I mean, this morning the conditions were very difficult, like you have seen on TV. I think uh, first stage, a lot of dump section, second stage, much better. So it's quite a compromise. Also, we have to think that we are here for the championship, not for only one race. So it's important to be at the end and to catch a maximum of points. Yeah, it's his first outing in the Peugeot. He wants to bring it home, I assume. Yeah, it's very important. I mean, we made only two days of tests. It's not enough, uh, but it's quite important for him to take the confidence of the car, to learn the team. But I'm very, uh, very happy with what he did so far. You were just telling me that there was a difference in the tyre choice for the Peugeots and the Skoda. Yeah, it was quite different. I mean, the Skoda, we think, are with softer tyre than what we did. It was a big advantage on the first stage, but uh, perhaps a disadvantage on the second stage and the Peugeot were with harder compound. So I think it's better on the second stage than the first one. We have to see in, in all, to, all together what's the best choice. And what happens this afternoon? Exactly. But I, we don't know about the weather yet, so perhaps can be some snow coming. We don't know yet. Thank you. Thank you. It is about tyre compound. It's going to be about uh, your choices as well. Maybe set up uh, Saint Jean en Royan to uh, Fort Deurle, second run through that, and then the cemetery de Vazieux, uh, the old resistance cemetery, and the Col de Gautizar, second run through as well. It'll seem familiar, but it could be very different indeed. Hope to have your company. We will be live at 1600 Central European time. That's three in the afternoon in the United Kingdom and wherever time you are in the evening in the lovely Asia-Pacific zone. We'll see you then.